I will make a statement that I'm pretty sure that you have never heard before. And that statement is, you should play chess and get good at chess to become a useful data scientist and a machine learning expert for your company. Now, how does that work? Watch this video to find out. This is Chaitanya Sambhara, faculty at the College of Business, University of Texas, Arlington. Okay, have you ever thought about it? Robots that play chess, how do they play the game and how do they even win? You can surely teach a robot all the rules of a game by writing code for it. But how do you teach a robot to make decisions? Try this experiment. Go to chess.com and play a game against a robot. There you can choose a very easy robot all the way to a grandmaster. What is amazing is that you have robots who have a rating of 400 and all the way to 2500 plus of rating in there. So how does a robot know how well it should play based on its own rating? And the answer is that there is humongous data behind the scenes where thousands and thousands, actually millions of games have been analyzed. And based on the knowledge of the historic games, the robot decides the best course of action. And what is all this based on? Simply put, data science and machine learning. And if you think data science, analytics, machine learning is anything new, well, you are mistaken. Even in the era of 1990s, when there was hardly any internet, chess genius Garry Kasparov, who was the best chess player in the world at that time, was defeated in a game of chess by a computer called Deep Blue, developed by IBM. The world was paying a lot of attention, and we weren't quite used to that. Chess events never get covered like that. Whoa! Deep Blue has instantly sacrificed with Knight Capture's E6. Deep Blue was just sitting there and just keep on attacking, just moving pieces around, and he knew he was in trouble. We, we demonstrated that there are multiple approaches to solving probably any intellectual problem. As I said, there was hardly any internet and data analytics and machine learning as we know it today were at that time mostly unheard of. But obviously they all existed, right? What happened is that with each move, computer was fed with the data regarding what had just happened. And based on each move by the opponent, the computer would analyze thousands and thousands of possibilities where not just the next move, but a few moves ahead would be considered. Moreover, the computer would predict all the possible moves that the opponent is likely to make. So having this context, let us see how the game of chess applies to data scientists today. Before we go any further, it is very important to understand what do people working in data science and analytics even do? And why do I say playing chess will help you become a more useful data scientist or a machine learning expert in your company? So what do data scientists and analytics professionals do in their company? They help answer six broad set of questions that the company's decisions makers ask. And I will discuss each one of these six questions. The first kind of question is, if something is happening in the market, why is it even happening that way and what is causing it? Why are our sales right now very low or very high? And in many cases, why are our sales not increasing as per our expectations? Why is it that our product sells better among one age group and in one location and not so much in others? And why is it that some of my YouTube videos become popular and other videos not so much? The second broad category of questions is that whatever that is happening, are there any patterns in the data? Are there any cyclical patterns in the data? Are there any clusters? And are there any relationships among these clusters? Do people who buy X are also likely to buy Y or not? If we launch a new product in the market, who are the people who are likely to be early adopters of our product? And how can we find them and where do we find them? And once we find them, how should we actually target them so that they actually are tempted to buy our product? The third broad category of questions they ask is based on everything that has been happening so far, can we project the future outcomes? That is, if we make one move or make one decision, such as offering a new discount, what is the likely change and why then? How will that affect our sales? If we pick one tagline, how is it going to help us? If you remember a master stroke by Coca-Cola 20 years ago, they hired Amir Khan and they launched a simple tagline, which was Thanda Matlab Coca-Cola. And that worked great with people because people traditionally were used to asking kya lenge thanda ya garam where garam meant tea or coffee and thanda meant soft drinks and that is where coke caught that tagline when you ask what is thanda they said thanda matlab coca cola and that tagline thanda matlab coca cola really connected with people and while coca cola was struggling for a while it immediately boosted its sales in India. And what happened is that their competitors had to really brainstorm to come up with innovative ideas and become more creative. See, the point is that every competitive move matters. And therefore, you need to guess 
what move your competitor is likely going to make similar to the game of chess after 10 moves by each player based on all the moves so far how is my opponent thinking now based on the current data and intelligence that we have developed can we estimate the opponent's move and can we estimate our own move the fourth category of question is if we take a particular decision what are the different types of outcomes that are likely here controlling for your competitors moves you need to evaluate how is your decision going to help you or even harm you is it going to strengthen your game or is it going to make you weak just like the game of chess when you make a certain move you may think that you are being aggressive and attacking your opponent in a certain way but guess what you might become weak in another way you may possibly be overlooking that one of your more valuable pieces might become vulnerable after your move the fifth category of question and a very important thing to consider is related to what are the business opportunities in the market what can our company do to differentiate ourselves from our competitors can we even create a new market for our product can we even create a blue ocean those who do not understand what i mean by blue ocean blue ocean is when there is no competition at all it's an open space and you launch a brand new product and there are no competitors for that product for example when iphone came up it was blue ocean because there were no other smartphones like an iphone right then you have pink ocean and the context for blue ocean pink ocean and then there is a thing called red ocean uh, the context is that in a blue ocean all the fish are still there the market is there for you to capture and no fish has been killed so it's all blue pink ocean means that you are playing in that game and then you have competitors you have other fishermen who are hunting for the same fish and because some fish have been hunted there is some blood coming out and therefore the ocean has become pink and then we have a red ocean which means that there are a lot of people in the market a lot of competition is going on in the market and everybody is hunting the fish therefore because of so much of hunting the ocean has become red in the context of iphone market let's say in today's day and age there is a lot of competition among different types of smartphone makers therefore it is very important to understand what are our competitors doing what kind of innovations are our competitors making based on our decisions and based on our innovations how soon can our competitors catch up with us and the sixth and the last very important question to consider is that with each move you make you cannot go with a fixed plan your competitors are also making their moves to counter your moves and if you fail to see their plan your plan will fail therefore you may need to deviate from your original plan with each move so you continuously need to update your data and collect market intelligence your company might even be forced to reanalyze all the data that you have been analyzing so far and only when you do that will you be able to make better business decisions and that is what exactly happens in the game of chess as well so i hope that you found this video to be interesting thank you for watching jai hind and god bless america